Okay, let's talk about the R2M2 protocol and specifically the remove phase of the protocol. What exactly are we trying to remove? Well, first of all, we're trying to remove this insidious effect of the LPS producing bacteria and the fat that they eat. We're also trying to eliminate food allergies in case they're involved, both food allergies and food sensitivities. Toxic exposures that can lead to leaky gut situations or compromise the mitochondria, the little energy producing factories inside all of our cells, which when they become damaged can create fatigue and or pain. Things like alcohol and other toxins are things that we want to get out of the diet. We also want to take dietary stress out of the equation as well. When you are constantly obsessing about what you're going to eat, that be can become a significant stress to the neuroendocrine immune system as well. And of course, over exercising. So when we talk about remove, we're essentially giving the body a chance to relax because remember the next phase is relax, but we can't relax if we have all these negative insidious effects bearing down on us. And so when it comes to food, we're going to remove first and foremost offending food combinations. As you've learned, this is going to be the fat starch sugar combination. The sugar and starch lead to the overgrowth of certain bacteria that are more prominent with the LPS coats. And then the fat is where the LPS hitches a ride and gets into the system to begin with. We want to eliminate this food combination. We also want to get rid of potential food allergens and food sensitivities, common food allergens, things like dairy and wheat. And also common food adjuvants. You've heard me use that term before. You probably don't know what it is, but we're going to touch on it in a minute. But an adjuvant is basically an irritant, something that irritates the gut lining. In and of itself, it may not be allergenic, but because it irritates the gut lining, it makes us more sensitive to the things we're already allergic to. Good examples of this would include the nightshade family, which would be tomatoes, white potatoes, peppers and things of that nature. And we're also going to be removing stress, emotional stress, stress of sleep deprivation, exercise stress, over dieting stress, and any hidden and unintentional stresses in our lives. The bacteria are really, really important. And sometimes that will require the antibiotic therapies and or the natural way to do it, oregano oil as well. And so that is an option for you if you know that this is a big deal or if on your Cyrex panel, you keep or your U biome panel, you keep coming up with these negative bacteria that are associated with dysfunction, you may eventually have to go to antibiotics and oregano oil in order to remove them. I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting out that way, but you certainly can. And this is why testing and retesting is important to make sure that you're getting this removal phase taken care of. If you don't do this correctly, and it can take quite some time for some people, you're never going to feel better. And this is where most people miss the opportunity to heal their conditions. Food allergies, most of us know what this means, but it's not a traditional allergy in the sense of when you get stung by a bee and you have this reaction. These allergies are hidden food allergies. We call them IgG, delayed sensitivity reactions. Again, the Cyrex panels can tell you which foods you might have issues with. The most common would be corn, wheat, dairy, um, peanuts, uh, gluten and uh, gluten containing grains, uh, those kinds of things. And so you're going to want to be careful about that. And you'll see in the protocol, uh, this is taken into account. Here is the gut lining. And just as a reminder about what is happening here, typically, if you look over here on the left hand side of your screen, the way the cells lining the gut are packed tightly together. And then as you move to the center of the screen, you see that they start widening. These are called gap junctions. And this is what leaky gut looks like essentially under a microscope. So you can see those little diamonds. They will then pass through in this leaky gut situation. And the immune system, once they get into the blood, creates antibodies to these. These can then cause all kinds of reactions, including autoimmune type reactions. Adjuvants, recommended by these red diamonds here, irritate the gut lining, things like tomato, white potato, 
peppers, all peppers, hot foods, those kinds of things can be the reason that we get some of this irritation and this leaky gut situation. So if you've ever had spicy food and then the next morning you wake up and realize, oh my God, my joints are aching or my muscle pain is worse or I feel more fatigued, it may be a result of these adjuvants stirring things up, causing some reactions. An example of this would be pizza, which is a food that has two common allergens in it, both wheat and dairy and a very strong adjuvant, tomato. And so oftentimes people react pretty strongly to pizza because of this adjuvant factor as well as these two common uh, you know, sort of factors, uh, allergy foods that are factors involved. So these adjuvants are causing some of these leaky guts and causing these gap junctions to open up. What are some of these adjuvants? Well, we covered them, tomato, potato, uh, peppers, And this does not include sweet potato, by the way, but it does include white potato. And if you ever put white potato into uh, water before you boil it, you notice that there's this soapy compound up at the top. Well, those are lectins and saponins that act as adjuvants. And so that's part of the reason why these foods can be uh, a hidden cause of issues for some people. Now, the hypoallergenic eat less, exercise less approach, this is what we call the 3-2-1 protocol at Metabolic Effect. And you can use this protocol with any over-the-counter, off-the-shelf dietary system, whether it be keto diet, vegan or vegetarian diet, or whether it be the paleo diet. The 3 to one is easy on digestion. It's very satiating because we tend to want to bump up the fiber and or protein. It reprograms behavioral hunger. It's hypoallergenic, meaning that we have less food reactivity going on. It's very easy to do and remember, and therefore it's very convenient. It also ends up being very low calorie. For those of you who want to lose weight, it can be a very beneficial thing to do. We covered this before, but we'll do it again really quickly. Three meals per day. Two of those meals are protein and or fat-based. Again, this helps us remove some of the negative effect of this worst combination of food of starch, sugar, and fat combined. These meals, these two meals, you want enough protein and fiber to satisfy and or fat if you're going the keto route. Now, a lot of people get confused by this. Don't be. The best approach to this is to do stews, soups, salads, scrambles, and or shakes. Now, if you're going to do shakes, remember you want to keep them hypoallergenic, especially if you're dealing with pain syndromes or autoimmune conditions. Easy to digest, hypoallergenic protein shakes would be things like Vega Sport, Plant Fusion, Hemp Force, and others. Make sure you find one you like. And then there's one regular meal at the end of the day that typically is three parts vegetable, two parts protein and or fat, and then a little bit of starch typically. Now, here are your choices. Shakes, salads, but here's the thing, especially if you're someone who deals with a lot of serious gut-related dysfunction, especially those who you might have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome, you want to focus on stews like in the bottom in the crock pot and or soups rather than salads and shakes. Obviously, salads with the raw vegetables, they can create a lot of dysfunction, especially for those of you who have FODMAP sensitivities. You might say, what are FODMAP? FODMAP is an acronym. It stands for fermentable, oligo, di, mono, saccharides, and polyols. Basically, what these are are food compounds, carbohydrate compounds that are difficult for us to digest and can stir up gut bowel dysfunction. So you want to be aware of that. Typically, vegetables and things like that are very high in those things. These are the ones that you're going to want to focus on in particular for everyone, really, but especially those of you dealing with any digestive issues any serious autoimmune complaints, any serious fatigue issues. These are nice pre-digested foods you're going to want to avail yourself of. So a lot of times people will say, well, what about this last meal, this last meal, this meal that contains protein, starch, or fat, and vegetables? Well, you don't have to follow this particular meal, but typically it is going to be a good meal to have. Typically is half the plate vegetables, lean protein, and or if you're doing a keto-based diet, fatty proteins. And then starch or fat are this little sliver there. That's why we're trying to minimize this combination. Now, remember, again, the FODMAP situation or making sure these vegetables are digested for you to handle. This could be an issue for people with sensitivities, and oftentimes uh, vegetables can be an issue. If you're having issues with cravings and things like that, you can consider a hypoallergenic 
craving control formula. We have one at Metabolic Effect called Craving Cocoa. It's like a dessert that you can use to mix in heavy cream if you're doing a keto diet. It's very good for vegans and vegetarians as sort of a sweet treat and paleo dieters as well.